Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. All right, the next big question. Can you reuse the cam bearings? And the answer is absolutely you can. I've used reused cam bearings several times. The big question is, are they in good enough condition to be reused? And if you are going to reuse them, how long do you anticipate keeping the engine? Sometimes you're doing a budget rebuild, you don't want to take the bearings out, you don't want to buy new ones, so you just reuse the old ones. And if the cam is fine, if it's not sloppy, if it's turning fine, there's no problem reusing it. As long as they're not scored, uh, as long as they're not really worn on one side, there's no problem using them. So on the block I had for this engine that cracked, the bearings in there are terrific. I checked all the locations and you can see these bearings are in very good condition and I would have absolutely no problem reusing those bearings if I were using the same block. But now that I have a new block, I have to put new bearings in it. You can't really take bearings out and then push them into a, a new block because they are press fit in there. When you, when you push them in, they're press fit. And taking them out and putting them in, they might not sit right and it really isn't worth taking that chance. So this block got new cam bearings. Now before installing my cam, I'll make sure I get plenty of assembly lube inside on all of the cam bearings. Okay, I have all the cam bearings lubed and I have the camshaft lubed on the journals only. Since it's a roller cam, you do not put any lubrication on the lobes. So you just gently insert. And I like to rest it on each bearing surface just to get it in there. And this is not a rushing process. Just do it gently. I have a long bolt on the front to help give me some some leverage as I'm going through here. See this long bolt I have here? Acts as a nice handle. Helps, helps get it in there, especially when you get towards the end, like this. I also have a lot of assembly lube on the gear, where the intermediate shaft meets the camshaft and rotates. So, there we go. Oops. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just using a dial indicator to make sure I get number one piston at top dead center. Exactly. Okay, raise, falls a little bit. I can go back a little bit here. Goes up right there. Now I'm going to use the same timing chain and gear that I took out. And I want to share this with you because it can be confusing. It's not easy to, uh, to tell. The sprocket that goes on the crankshaft, you can see there's a dot here. And that dot goes on the keyway on the crankshaft. The crankshaft is not at 12 o'clock. It's probably at 1 o'clock-ish. And when you have dot to dot or zero timing, the button or the pin on the camshaft will be about roughly 4 o'clock. That goes in this hole right here. Now, you want to set these up so that you have dot to dot, but it's not dot to dot for the for the uh, keyway. There's another dot on this sprocket, and the other dot on the sprocket is right, right there between two teeth. It's really small, and you have to see that. So if you're doing straight up timing, you have the dot here, which goes to the keyway. The dot here matches up with the dot on the cam sprocket. And then you have advanced and um, four degree advanced and retired four degree for if you want to advance or retard your timing. There's different slots here and different dots that go with it. So since I am putting it dot to dot, I put the, the sprocket in here and I'm looking for the dot in the sprocket to line up with the the dot on the cam gear and I have my one o'clock there so I'm going to gently slide this on and and I'm slightly off on the camshaft here so I have to turn this a little bit and again I'm gonna take this off just to make sure it's right it's got to be right dot to dot right there so slide on there and get it to the camshaft 
just a little bit off. There we go. And to answer your question, it is Frank snoring in the background. Sometimes it does take a little finessing to get that dot and that dot lined up while you have the sprockets lined up. But patience and you'll get there. Now just a gentle tap to make sure the sprocket is on the crank and a gentle tap make sure the cam gears on. Now the cam bolts with just a little bit of red Loctite on each I'll get the first one set in place and you have to leave this out a little bit so you can get the cam button in there so put one on drop a Loctite and leave it out so I can set the cam button in here starting to tighten that down Make sure it's nice and centered. Just hold it in place. And another little dot dab of Loctite, red Loctite, or thread locker. Doesn't have to be Loctite. There are a couple different brands. And this is the tricky part because the washer on the last bolt usually has to be down at the bottom to hold the cam button in. And okay, I'll just tighten those up. Torque while the Loctite is still wet to 45 foot pounds. All done. Last thing before I finish here, I'll just put some assembly lube in inside the sprocket, turn the engine over a few times just to spread it out and then put it back at top dead center for number one piston. Here's the keyway. Keyway's coming up usually around two o'clock is top dead center, but if I do that I'm 180 degrees off because my dot is up here. So I have to keep going until the dot on the cam sprocket comes back around. I still have my dial indicator on number one and I get this back dot to dot. And right there. Now the timing chain is lubed all the way around. Piston number one is at top dead center. I'm back to dot to dot, so I'm sure my valve timing is right, so I can do my valve installation or my, my valve train installation, and I'm sure that piston number one is at top dead center, and the cam is ready for firing at number one top dead center. So no problem, we're using cam bearings if you have to. Really no big deal, I had to use new ones, new block. Uh, timing chain also no problem using that as long as it's not worn out and you can tell by pushing on the timing chain if there's too much slop in there you should replace it worn out timing chain uh, but if you're on a budget you can reuse that too so um, my next video we're going to do the uh, cylinder heads you got to change the springs to match the camshaft and account for the additional mass of the lifters for the hydraulic roller lifters which are heavier than the flat tappets that came out I'll go through that. We'll change the valve springs. I'll explain the difference, why the valve springs are being changed and what they're being changed for and what the range is usually for roller, uh, roller springs and a, a roller head for a roller cam. So hit like and subscribe uh, so you can stay up on all the videos. And uh, next video we'll be doing that valve train and cylinder heads. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.